long before it began. And we're not going to stop speaking out until all the boys and girls come back to America and this government takes care of them when they get home. My son had been in the Army for six years. He went to Iraq in May of 2003 as part of the Stabilization Force. He spent 11 months in Iraq, eight months of that in Sadar City. 20 of those young men who had been in Iraq for five days were ambushed in Sadar City. And my son volunteered to go rescue them. And he was the first casualty in his company. I know what my son saw that last day of his life. And had he had come home, he would have come home a different man than he went to Iraq. This is happening to all our boys and girls over there. So that's why we're going to continue to speak. We're going to continue to tell the truth. And we're going to demand to bring our boys and girls home and that our government takes care of them when they get here. Four years ago, at the State of the Union message, I was in Kabul, Afghanistan. I helped reopen the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan in December of 2001 and was sitting in the bunker of the U.S. Embassy in January of 2002 when George Bush started talking trash. He started talking about other countries of interest of the United States. He called them the axis of evil. Iran, Iraq, North Korea. It was three years, two years later in uh, March of 2003 that I, I decided that after 35 years of being in the government, in the U.S. Army first and rising to the rank of colonel and then 16 years in the State Department, that at long last I finally found something that I could resign over. You know, the British, the British bureaucrats coughed up the old Downing Street memos. Well, there's something afoot here, too. There must be the C Street memos for the State Department or the Arlington memos for the Pentagon. And some of your friends probably know about this. So for the safety of our country, for the security of our country, we need to know what the Bush administration was doing. We need to know it officially. We know it in our guts. But we need to know it because there are actions we, the people, have to take. And that's to hold this regime accountable. There's no accountability at all for anything at the moment. And we, the people, have to start making them accountable. And we've got to put some, some spine in our, the people that serve us right up here. The Congress has got to get behind this. To know President Kennedy. Mr. Bush, you're no president. I'm old enough to know President Nixon. Mr. Bush, you're no president. I'm old enough to know Johnson, Carter, Bush one. This man is not a president. Simply because you steal an election doesn't make you a president. Never in the history, never in the history, of the presidency of the United States have we had a president that has allowed a vice president to have more power and influence than the one who's in the Oval Office. Never before in history, never before in history. This morning, a great woman died. She was more than just the wife of Martin Luther King Jr. She was as much part of the movement as he was. She built that center for nonviolence. She built that center for social justice. The talk show personalities on the right, the conservatives, will tell you tomorrow that it was a small crowd, that it wasn't large enough. But let me tell you, I'm old enough to remember when only a handful of people showed up to end the Vietnam War and over a half a million ended it. Sometimes you gotta raise a little hell to get some heaven. Sometimes you gotta have feet in the street 
And what we need on Saturday is heat in the street. Heat in the street. Heat in the street. The world cannot wait on George Bush to end his regime. He must step down. He must step down. He must step down. Step down. Step down. Step down. I hear you. 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 Come on. Yeah!